There. I think all my pride. They are just the cubs at the moment. Now, I can't see any carcass of anything else in here, but the other lions are in and amongst this thicket. Now, I don't think that they're going to go very far if they have killed something else today, but we'll just sit here for a little bit and then we'll move around and see if we can't get a slightly better view. There are two other guides in here trying to get a view of these lions and it's not easy because there's a huge amount of sort of thicket in the way. Now let us compare if you, you will, uh, the main situation, I know I've been going on about it, I feel a bit um, like a broken record, but I really think it's, uh, Brian, sorry, quickly to the, to the right, there was a lion in a tree. It was a little cub, it's jumped out again. Uh, not that one. That one is uh, dead. Well, not dead, but dead to the world. I really think that these guys have for some reason have recovered from the mange. They're not scratching anymore. There's a little bit of biting of fur, but no more than is normal. And yet the Styx lioness, who's had the disease for longer than these chaps have, still hasn't managed to sh shake it off yet. And that obviously must have a huge, uh, or must be a huge reason why this pride of lions has managed to maintain all eight little cubs and the sticks lost all eight of theirs. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, perhaps you're a new viewer, we view two prides of lions here normally. The sticks pride of three lionesses and they had eight cubs at, at one stage. And then this pride, the Inkohumas, of five lionesses and eight cubs. The lionesses are obviously invisible. This beautiful sound of the cicadas starting up. And they're both dominated by the four Birmingham males. That was one of them that you just saw there. The, well, you saw his underarm, his hairy underarm peeping through the thicket. And the Styx Pride cubs, all eight of them, died of mange. We think that they caught it from one of the Birmingham boys. Then this pride started to show signs. They all started scratching and they started to look a bit ropey. We got a bit worried about them. And now they're absolutely fine. They do look, some of them still have got mangy patches, but the endless scratching seems to have stopped. And the mothers don't seem to have picked it up at all. So clearly there must be either some kind of genetic resistance that this pride has to mange or they have been so well fed during the course of the disease that their bodies have just been much better able to fight it off. That lion is eating a piece of... What is that? It looks like a very small... Um, Compretum. No, it's a Tambuti tree. You must be careful of that. That's going to give him a nasty runny tummy. And uh, if you've never seen a lion go to the loo, everybody, you will know that a lion does not need any help uh, with making its bowels move, certainly not in front of us. So there are three groups of cubs, of course, if you are a new viewer again. They are ranging from five and a half months old to three and a half months old. Three litters, so five and a half months, around about sort of four and a bit, no, I'm wrong, sorry, five months to four months. It's um, so approaching five and a half months. That's the oldest, then two weeks and two weeks behind those come the others. And they're all starting to look rather the same size now. At one stage it was very, very obvious which the smallest and youngest were, but they grow very quickly. As the old cliche goes, Brian, they grow up so fast. Oh, yeah. Yes. Nostalgia. Ooh, now Steph has a surprise, possibly from his quest with the honey guide. Oh, the thing now, you see, once you've got a debt, everybody, you've got to pay that debt. And Steph is now in debt to that honey guide. It happens. That honey guide is going to lead us to a snake. You see? Even that little... Lion was looking upset. Now, I'm slightly worried about that cub. And if you look at the showing, I think that's very strange. When the lion has been eating this much, maybe it's just his ankle that he's lying. There's one cub there, and off to the right hand side 
is the rest of the lines. Apparently my signal is not great. I don't know that we can reposition from here, though. I think this might be the only view that we have. What do you want to do? Straight in the aerial. What do you need, Brian? A stick by my feet? No, but you can have my selfie stick if you want it. You want the wheel spanner? It's being very fussy about this kind of sticky ones. Anyway, we're okay. We've got a view of the lions. Now, I was wrong. They haven't killed. Rexon was saying he thinks they are going to try it a little bit later. I tend area of 